It's Monday morning. It's not a good day when you can't find a four-year-old that's in the company of a guy who has legally changed his name to West Wild Hogs. And I think that speaks volumes there. It is important to understand who we're dealing with, and that's what we need to communicate to you today. And we also need to make sure that everyone in at least the southeast United States, and I would suggest the eastern part of the United States, sees this coverage and helps us find this child. West Wild Hogs apparently left home a week ago today from Seal, Alabama with his wife. He told her, I have a surprise for you, but he wouldn't tell her what the surprise was. So they left Seal, Alabama, and they went north on 75 through Tennessee to Kentucky to West Virginia to Virginia to Maryland, where apparently they rested at a welcome center. From there, they uh, interstate 95 south to Charlotte, North Carolina, then back to Tennessee to I-75, and then they came south to Georgia, into Georgia. The wife at about Dalton, Georgia said, hey, I've had enough of this. I've been riding around with you, and it's now Thursday, since last Monday, about this surprise that you won't tell me anything about. So she gets out of the car and calls family to take her back home to Seal, Alabama. He then proceeds south on 75 and ends up on the evening of Friday the 7th at his grandmother's house in Polk City, Florida. Now his grandmother's not seen West Wild Hogs in over a year. He stays there that evening, tells his grandmother, I have an interview on Monday. He's a truck driver by trade. And the bottom line to it is that he knows the roads pretty well. So on Saturday morning, the grandmother said, well, I've got to go to work. And he said, well, can you give me the address of some Walmart stores? So she pulls up some addresses of Walmart stores. And sometime between Friday night and Saturday morning, they also had this conversation about, well, have you seen the family, the Rebecca Lewis family, who he knows, the grandmother knows, apparently that one grandmother has been friends with the other grandmother and so there's been a long time relationship. The grandmother from Polk City goes off to work in Claremont and he leaves and that's the last she's seen of him. Well sometime before 9.30 a.m. on Saturday he picks Rebecca Lewis up on Highway 98 North where she lived. Now let me stop there for a second and say that he lived with a Rebecca Lewis family about two years ago when she was an infant. So obviously she probably, I can't imagine that she could remember him from when she was only two years old. But he was made to leave there two years ago because he pulled a gun on the family and pointed it. So the mother ran him off. So he's been out of the picture from this family for two years. It's not like he's taken off with a neighbor kid who has been, he has been like an uncle to. He takes the child. He goes across the street to McDonald's and spends about 30 minutes there eating breakfast. We've talked to witnesses from McDonald's. We certainly have the the clips from McDonald's as you see on the far side there and off he goes. The next time we learn of West Wild Hogs 
and Rebecca Lewis is when he shows up at a BP station in Forsyth, Georgia, off Interstate 75. And that is about 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. He buys drinks. We notice from that video she is now wearing a pink dress and leggings. He's in a light-colored t-shirt wearing blue jeans. We hear or see nothing from him after that time until sometime last night between 10 and 11 p.m. a park ranger sees this Nissan in the Cove Lake State Park off of Interstate 75 in Tennessee near the Kentucky border. The park ranger checks this guy out. He says, hey, I'm here waiting on this young lady's mother, Rebecca's mother, which is obviously a, a lie. And the park ranger said, well, the park's closed. You got to leave. Sometime after that, the park ranger sees a bulletin and goes, oh my gosh, that's the guy and the four-year-old child that he's kidnapped. And overnight calls detectives with our sheriff's office. I want to tell you that the FBI and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement have been working with us hand in glove from the very beginning of this investigation. However, the state of Tennessee chose not to do an Amber Alert when we asked them to because they said there was no evidence at the time that Rebecca and West Wild Hogs was in Tennessee. Well, here's a news flash, Tennessee. He was there. They did a missing persons. It's important for the community to understand we're tracking this guy after the fact. He doesn't have any cell phone. He has no way for us to track him real time. Law enforcement agencies all over the southeast should be aware that he has kidnapped this four-year-old child. If they aren't, I hope they watch your news broadcast because we've sent it out on all of our formal systems. But someone in the community is going to pull up beside this guy or pass him on the interstate. He's got Alabama tags on the car, and we'll provide those tag numbers for you. We're trying to look at the person. We know he's bipolar. We know he suffers from depression. We know that he doesn't have a criminal history at all. We know that it's very important that we find him and return Rebecca to her family. Is Rebecca in immediate harm? She's certainly in immediate danger. We don't know what his proclivities may be or may turn into. But we know this, without the community's help, without law enforcement help, we know he has and feels very comfortable driving the highways. That's what he did for a living. And we see him driving a route and currently driving a route on the interstate roads. He showed no evidence of hurting the child based upon what we see at the BP station, based upon the interviews we, we did. Last night, his interaction with a park was collected. He didn't offer to run. He didn't offer any violence. He only offered to lie and keep possession of this child. Here's a message for West Wild Hogs. Don't you hurt that baby. You keep that baby safe and take her to a police department, a sheriff's office, a fire department. You turn her over to responsible citizens at a church. 
We'll worry about catching you later, but we want that child back right now. Any questions? Sir, do, you, do your investigators have any idea where he could potentially be headed at this point? It appears he's made a northern trek on. What do you do? We don't think he's actively running from us in the sense that he's running because he's followed the same pattern so far that he followed when he took his wife on the same ride last week. Do we anticipate that he'll move further north into Kentucky and over West Virginia and Virginia and Maryland and back loop around to 95? We don't know where he is or what he's doing because we missed our last best opportunity to recover the child last night in that state park in Tennessee where, by the way, they didn't do the Amber Alert because they didn't know he was in Tennessee. Well, here's a news flash. He probably was not in Tennessee now. But I suggest you go ahead and do the Amber Alert. So someone in Kentucky, West Virginia, some place, he's riding the interstate roads. At this point, he does not appear to be violent. We hope it stays that way. We just want the baby back. If he'll just give us the baby and drive off, We'll worry with him later on. The most important thing we can do now is recover the baby. Someone will see him at a rest area, at a convenience store, at a gas station, at a truck stop. He's very comfortable in those areas. He was in a state park. But last night, the low temperature was in the low 40s. And we got a four-year-old child that's out exposed to the elements in the backside of a car. You mentioned his wife and how he had some sort of surprise for her. Are you guys thinking that maybe this young girl was the surprise that he had been planning this for? We don't know if that was the surprise. He's been disabled as a truck driver for two years. He's depressed. He's bipolar. We don't know if there ever was a surprise because he seemed very satisfied with his wife just driving the interstate roads, which if you think about it, as a truck driver, he's very comfortable. That is his comfort zone. So when he lost his wife to ride with him, he shows up at his grandmother's house. He's not been here in over a year. He's not seen this family in over two years, and he's forced to leave there because he ostensibly pulled a gun. Did he show up there and just see the child early in the morning out in the yard? Did he go into the house and take her out of the bed? That's the answers we don't have yet. But we know this. He absolutely has this child, and now he's continued with this pattern of driving the interstate roads. We think someone, someplace, that pays attention will see this gray silver car with these Alabama tags. He is about five foot eight. He's five foot eight, heavy set with red hair. And she's a little bitty, beautiful four year old child. They ought to stick out. And all we need is someone to tell us to dial 911. And if some good old boys see it, they can hold him and separate her and hold her to the law enforcement get there. Just help us out. We want the baby back. We want him, but not near as bad as we want her. We want her safe and secure, and then we'll chase him down if we have to do that at a separate time. So he can put her off at a safe location or some good old boys can help us by grabbing the girl and holding him. Or you can just follow them and dial 911 until we can get local law enforcement there. We've got all hands on deck. We're doing everything we can. But he has no technology in his car that would allow us any real-time tracking. 
So we're having to do this the old-fashioned way, and that's through communications with the people we serve across. And you know what? Someone today was What do you think the difference would have been if it were an Amber Alert versus a missing person? I mean, we don't know. I would like to think No. Not, because he was made to leave two years ago after pointing guns at this family. Do we have any information about um, whether or not the route he's taking or traveling, if maybe he traveled that route as a truck driver or one of his employers? Or he seems to be comfortable on the interstates. We know he was a past truck driver before he was. his activities. We're patterning him after the fact. We're not around in front of him yet. And that's why we need the community's help. What I'm asking today is the community start looking for this four-year-old child like it's their four-year-old child and we'll have this thing solved pretty darn quick. Sure, if your investigators know how he made it we don't know whether or not he made entry into the family home. We just know that he has the child. 
We know that the child was seen in bed by the 16-year-old sister. And then when she woke up about 9 or 9.30, the child was not in the house. So they looked for the child for a couple of hours before they even notified the sheriff's office. He, whether he got her from the house or whether she was outside scampering around and playing and he picked her up in the yard, we don't know. But he took her to a McDonald's in North Lakeland in the 6200 block and spent about 30 minutes there eating breakfast and talking to people with the child in his possession. So we're praying for the best and we're preparing for the worst. But we have worked this around the clock, and that's why we're making this concerted effort and have, with the media all weekend, made this effort that, look, we can broadcast this here in Florida because he may turn around and come back to Florida. But we need this in front of him. We know that he's gone from Polk City to North Lakeland to Forsyth, Georgia, to Interstate 75 at the park right at the Kentucky line, and he's moving north on the interstate. So help us out. If this were your baby, you'd want her home, and we want her home. 